Hello! Well, today I am shipping in my pajamas because it's early and I did not get my things packaged up last night like I should have, but I already scheduled my carrier pickup. So I have like an hour window to get this done and get them outside. No sweat. Only got three today, but here we go. which is this little, it's is an Artesania Rinconada. Um, these are from Uruguay. You can tell by their little mark underneath. Um, and they sell really good. Uh, they come in all different animals and shapes and sizes and everything. So I picked out, it's going to go first class. I picked out this little box. And the reason I know this little box is going to work because I can set them on there and see that I have space all around. So then I can go ahead and make the box with my handy dandy eBay tape. All right. Boom. I'm going to wrap my little guy up. In some bubble wrap. Put him in his little cocoon. And he can emerge to bring joy and happiness to somebody. Because that's what this is all about, right? Now I'm going to fold it on this side. And I'm going to fold it on this side so that both sides have that extra cushion. Sometimes teeth just works better. All right, now I kind of set them in there to see how much space I got to fill. So I do need to. Put some bubble in there. Put him in there, and then I need one more piece of the bubble. Go on top. Boom, boom, boom. And remember, I go all the way around, tape to tape. That's the biggest strength. And then I write on here what is in the package. Boom. One down. Next, I have this little, um, it's a little owl sugar by, it's made in Japan. I can't remember. I'd have to look at my listing to see who made it. Um, but anyway, I sold that in auction format. So let's wrap him up. And a nice little cocoon. Now what I'll do with that lid, I don't want, I don't want porcelain on porcelain. So what I'm going to do is go over this once. Now I'm going to put the lid, and you can even put it this way. I don't know if you can see that. I've inverted it. That way the little handle has a little extra protection and it's not sticking up. Okay, now I'm going to fold them in here. And I'm going to fold it so that all sides are covered, protected, cushioned. Safe. Like I could actually now drop this on the floor and he'd probably be okay. I'm not going to test that because he's going to get a little more protection than that. But I'm pretty confident with my wrap job here. And, you know, just on the bottom, it's kind of loose here. I'm going to add one more piece of tape. All right, now this is going to go in, oh, I've got some extra packaging here. 
This is going to go in a number four is what this is called. This is the, I think it's six by six by six, if I'm not mistaken, or somewhere close to that. Um, but they call it the number four when you're ordering this. Oh, seven by seven by eight. I was close. I was close. So first, I'm going to see how much cushion I'm going to... You know what? I'm going to use all this tissue paper just because I got it laying here. Make that on the bottom, but I'm still going to put some bubble. So I'm going to put a little bubble then on top of the tissue paper. Okay, I'm going to set him in there. And now I need more bubble on top of that. because I don't want it to move around in there at all. That's the trick. No movement. No movement. Oh, there's a nice little piece. All right. I'm pretty, feeling pretty good about that. We'll give it the shake test. No movement. That's what we want. I like to go crisscross one time, extra strength, keep that package closed, unsealed, and strengthened. All right, now write on it what it is. I'm two down. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for. I have to ship a teapot. Very breakable, china, scary for some of you out there. Um, I ship a lot of stuff like this. All right. So we are going to use priority mail. Now, I've explained this in the past, but the reason you want to use priority mail over a cheaper service is because, because priority is by the weight and the size, people are not as likely to use it for very heavy items. Now the flat rate thing has kind of skewed that a little bit, but you're still, your odds of something extremely heavy falling on your package is very much minimized. Whereas if it goes one of the parcel or FedEx Smart Post or um, um, Parcel Select or one of those, you can have really big, heavy packages processing over and over and over on the box that you shipped out. So with priority, it's getting a priority treatment. It's getting less handling, less time on the conveyor belt, dropping into bins with packages falling on top of it. That is where your breakage happens, not with the Postal Service playing soccer. Um, so you can put a fragile sticker. You cannot put a fragile sticker. That only changes your buyer's perception. It doesn't change its treatment unless you pay for special handling because it's fragile, which I, I don't recommend. Unless it's like a thousand dollar piece and you just, you know, you got to get it there. So this is the number seven box. This one, and apparently they do have the size on here somewhere, is 12 by 12 by eight. So again, you could actually go four inches up this way and still fit into regular priority without dimensional weight pricing. So this is four by, or, or what did I say? Oh, my brain. 12 by 12 by eight. Wow. Wow. It must be morning brain. I have not had my Dr. Pepper yet. Okay. <laughs> so, so pretty much the same thing with this teapot and the lid as you saw me do on the last one. So I'm going to give it one thing, and this one I am going to invert it for sure because it's got, you know, the little finial sticking up. So that's going to be protected now down in there. And then I'm going to wrap. Now on a teapot, my most vulnerable places on this are what? That's right, the spout and the handle. So those need some extra protection. So we're going to give it its first layer of bubble and now I can still feel this 
I'm not happy with that. So we're going to get some more bubble. I don't have any more of the big pieces. So now, what I'm going to do, no, I'm going to get a bigger piece than that. All right, now I got my big piece of bubble wrap here. So what I'm gonna do is go end to end as I make the cocoon. Like the first one I went, you know, more over the side, but now I'm gonna go this way until I feel sure that those points are protected. And now I cannot feel that. I can, I can still feel them. But I can't feel the edges. I can't, there's no sharpness to it like there was before. So very well cocooned in there. My buyer will see that I went out of my way to protect it. So that's important too. If something arrives broken, the first thing your buyer is going to do is assess how that item was packaged. So if you have taken great pains to use a lot of materials and to package it in the right kind of box, they're less likely to blame you, the, the seller, as if they can question anything about the packaging job and say, oh, they didn't package it right, and blah, blah, blah. Also for claims, you know, you want to be able to say, I packaged this very securely. Now, I actually, <laughs> I lucked out. Now, you guys know I love to reuse materials. I purchased something that came packed in peanuts. So I have packing peanuts. And hopefully, I have enough because they shipped in a number seven. So I'm going to pour those in there. Now, I'm not going to pour them all. Ooh. <gasps> They gave me a piece of styrofoam in there, too. Ooh. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what I'm seeing down in there. Yeah. I like that. Here, I'm going to push you up there for a second. Okay. So I, I'm going to put in about that much and kind of pat them down. You want, your, you want them snug. Now I'm going to put this right in the center, and I'm going to kind of squish it down in there a little bit, right? Okay, you see that? It's very, very happy right in the middle of that package. And then I'm going to pour the rest of these peanuts on top. Now, I don't have enough space for that foam, I don't think. Let me see. I mean, if I do, this is perfect. Let's see. Let's see. They've already cut this foam down. Oh, that's a really beautiful thing, actually. Okay. So I just want to show you. I've got the peanuts all packed around. And the key is, you guys, make sure they're really snug around there. See, I, I was able to compact these a little more. Um, get them down in there, okay? You don't want movement. And actually, I'm, I'm a little squeamish that the teapot is sticking up and above the peanuts. So I'm gonna actually add some bubble wrap to even that out because I want the same level all the way before I put that um, styrofoam in there. The styrofoam is great, but it's not gonna do its job if everything underneath it is still shifting and moving. So I'm just gonna make sure that doesn't happen. All right, now I feel better. Now I can top this off with the styrofoam. Yes, perfect. All right, I'll squish that down. And I always want to like have to squish the lids down really firmly. I don't want it to be easy for that lid to go down because packing peanuts can shift and you don't want the item shifting to the edge of the package, so. We want it nice and snug. Okay. And 
And then I'm going to go the other way. One more across here. I saw a little bit of that lip sticking up. And that's the other thing is you don't want any edges to be caught in the processing material. Uh, processing material. Processing process along the way in the conveyor belts and all the automated stuff where if it catches on an edge, it could rip your box open. That's what happens sometimes, guys. When you see these packages that look like they've been through the war, they just tangled with the uh, processing equipment. All right, I feel really good about this package. Really confident that I can drop this quite a ways and it's not going to break that teapot. I can shake it. There's no move. I can't hear peanuts moving. So there you go. There's your happy teapot cocooned in its bubbles and styrofoam and packing peanuts, and it's going to get to its happy buyer. Now with that, go be profitable and make it fun.